Harry Potter was a social and cultural phenomenon that swept the world. Every kid and adult wanted to get their acceptance letter to Hogwarts. Giant parties and campouts were held every time a new book was released, and people came in costume. Kids, they got to stay up late. I remember one of my friends told me that their family actually had to buy multiple sets of a book when it was released so nobody could fight over who got to read it first or hog a copy. So who was your favorite Harry Potter character? There were so many good ones to choose from, like Harry or Hermione or Ginny or Luna or Neville or Dumbledore or McGonagall or Sirius. Just so many good characters. Personally, my favorite characters were the twins, because I related to them in so many ways that I can't even begin to express. But for most people, it was the younger brother of the twins and Harry Potter's best friend, Ron Weasley, who was their favorite. And honestly, I can't blame them. Ron was hot-headed and loyal and accepting and courageous, and more than a little unconfident because he always felt second-rate to his gazillion and one siblings. But more importantly, he was actually witty and funny and smart. He was actually smart. And he loved to crack a joke just to cut the tension. But he also kept a level head in dangerous situations when other people tended to lose their mind, Hermione included. He was calm and logical. He was a voice of reason. But you'd never actually know any of that if you'd only watched the movies. You'd never know that Juan is the heart of the trio. The Harry Potter movies did Ron a huge disservice as they slowly stripped away his core personality. And what we were left with instead was someone that was almost unrecognizable from the Ron that we had grown to love in the books. There was a reason that he was the favorite for so many different fans, and by quite a large margin. When I found out the Harry Potter books were being adapted for film, I was ecstatic. I mean, I was only in middle school at the time, and I think most of my friends actually got to go see The Philosopher's Stone long before I did. I think I actually only got to go see it in its final weeks in the theater. Looking back, I remember being disappointed by the film. I thought that they had cut out so much of the books and changed just as much. But now, now that I'm an adult and I look at it from the perspective of somebody who's actually studied screenwriting, they did a pretty good job. I actually understand the changes that they made. But there are certain changes that no matter how much time passes, I will never forgive. For me, movie Ron never felt like he belonged in Gryffindor. He had a courage and bravery that was just never displayed in the movies. But he was stripped of all of his useful magical knowledge and wit, and instead it was transferred to Hermione to set her up as a more brilliant and flawless character. So instead of the Golden Trio, it became a duo, and Ron was minimized to a comic relief side character, a husk of his former self. What bothers me the most is probably that movie Ron was set up to be a clueless moron, so when he does have moments of intelligence or emotional maturity or even petulance and sourness, it seems completely out of character for him. Because we've been groomed to see movie Ron as this goofy, lovable idiot that's just there to make you laugh, when nothing could be farther from the reality of the books. Ron is a character that grew up in the wizarding world. It's all he's ever known. So when Harry and Hermione are confused about aspects of the wizarding world along with the audience, he becomes this character of exposition that explains what is happening, explains the world so we as an audience can understand, but also in a way that it conveys it to Harry and Hermione. So when Ron suddenly has information and insight into a situation, it comes as a huge shock in the films. Like him knowing who Beetle the Bard is, or remembering the Basilisk Fang and that that would destroy the Horcrux, or even that he remembered the Parseltongue word to get into the chamber. And then in the movies, these are 
completely played off as a lucky, happy joke. It's the muggle world that confuses Ron. Like, he doesn't know how to use a telephone, and he doesn't understand the correct amount of postage. But that doesn't make him dumb. It's just culture shock. It's the devil's snare scene that sets a precedent for the remainder of the entire series. At that moment, he becomes the bumbling oaf that's just sort of there. And his entire character's importance is downplayed, and lines are given to other characters. Instead, he needs to have a quip or a funny one-liner to fill that space rather than just show the true depth of his character. He's screaming and he's panicking, which is the complete opposite of what actually happens. He actually manages to keep a cool enough head in this dangerous situation while the others panic that he screams at Hermione that she's a witch and she doesn't need bloody firewood to light a fire. Instead, he's played off with a funny little joke. As I said before, most of what Ron does in the films is prop up Hermione as a character. He might be a main character, but he's never actually treated like one in the films. And this is partially due to the fact that the main screenwriter of the films was a huge Hermione fan. He undercut Ron at every turn, just to make him useless. And it also made Hermione more pitiable. But it also set her up as to be the one to go to when there's a problem. So, Hermione became the most important character in the series outside of Harry. When the truth is, Harry would much rather spend his time with Ron than he would Hermione. He likes Hermione well enough, but he's not really all that interested in going to the library and studying, when he and Ron can go and goof off outside and basically procrastinate. So by the time we get to the fourth movie, and he's completing the second task, it doesn't even make sense that Ron is taken as the possession that Harry would miss most. The strong bond of friendship between Ron and Harry just hasn't developed in the films the way it has between Hermione and Harry. Because most of Ron's moments have been transferred to her. Ron standing on a broken leg to shield Harry from Sirius Black, or telling Harry that Dumbledore instructed them not to say anything about the ongoings of the Order of the Phoenix. More importantly, that he and Hermione will be there no matter what when they discuss hunting down the Horcruxes. In fact, he's completely removed from that scene in the films. Hermione becomes a more developed and complex character, one that Harry can really trust, but Ron, Ron doesn't really change. Every little change to his character drifts further and further from the original, so much so that he's almost unrecognizable to the Ron that we grew to love in the books, and any action in the films that he takes that's in character for him feels completely out of whack for the Ron that we've gotten to know in the movies. So when you finally reach the end of the Deathly Hallows movies, Ron and Hermione coming together romantically makes no sense whatsoever. It almost feels completely out of left field because they're so uneven. Every moment that would have set up their romantic relationship has either been downplayed or outright ignored. Their constant bickering while in the books is extremely playful and something they almost seem to do for sport, becomes Hermione basically telling Ron that he's an idiot over and over again in the films. It actually feels like Ron doesn't really like Hermione in the movies. He talks down to her, he takes her for granted, he's a complete smarmy ass. When the reality of their relationship is more of a give and take. They understood each other's strengths and each other's weaknesses, and they learned from each other. They supported each other. They were two people who grew up together, who complemented each other, who defended each other. He knows that she's a bossy little know-it-all, and she's flawed. But he also understands her inherent worth. He also stood up for her and defended her against everybody who would belittle her, like Snape or Malfoy. 
when instead in the movies, Movie Ron just sort of goes along with the taunting and teasing. Where's the Ron that clapped back when Snape humiliated Hermione in front of the entire class? The Ron that is strategic and cunning, who defeated McGonagall's chess set, that overcame his biggest fear to follow Harry into the Forbidden Forest, or was so excited when he actually managed to disarm Hermione, even if it was only once. Or the Ron that wailed and sobbed and screamed and nearly lost himself while he listened to the girl that he loved being tortured. The movies really did leave us with a Ron Weasley that had the emotional range of a teaspoon. But the world needs more emotionally complex men that maintain healthy, platonic, and romantic relationships. And men that respect strong women. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content. I put out videos every Saturday. One person couldn't feel all that. It'd explode. Just because you've got the emotional range of a teaspoon. <laughs>